Rudironis, this is your pal Rudroni K95 here. This is my new series called Anime Appreciation. So for the first thing about anime and manga in Korea, because in Korea they made their own comic books, which is called all manhwa, or as it was called Korean manga, which is basically the equivalent to Japanese manga. However, for manhwa, Korean manhwa artists is create their own manga in Korea, just like the Japanese manga artists did. And for the remedy of South Korean anime is that back it, then it was illegal to import Japanese show to, to other country, to the country, but it was legal for the South Korean animators to paint the animation cells and backgrounds as work as they would take the leftover cells and add a few, a few extras pieces or recolor them and produce them their own animated films. So many of them have been cut and pieced up together by using Korean anime movie titles such as Defenders of Space, Raiders of Galaxy, Protectors of U Universe, Solar Adventure, Shorin, Samsung Sa, Protectors of the Universe, Space Transformers, aka Micro Commando, Diatron 5, and Savior of the Earth, these seven anime title, Korean anime titles, movies, footages to create the great example of Korean anime, Space Thunder Kids. But yeah, and here is another Korean anime which it has a relation, and has no relation to the Gundam franchise, for example, Space Gundam V, which is the... Which it has the Valkyrie from Super Dimension Fortress Macross until it was translated as Robotech Macross Saga. But for the thing about anime and manga in Korean, however, for the thing about Korean an anime and Korean manga, also known as manhwa, uh, is more different and similar to Japanese anime and as well as manga. So, as it, for the most part, that Japanese made goods read anime, manga, video games, as well as they were embargoed from entering South Korea until the 1990s. No doubt it. So, without a legal channel to purchase or, and, or license such anime media, Enterprising animators, producers, directors came together to make their own animes, uh, uh, just borrowing character designs, music, and that's how they make their own anime until the 1990s. There are references to the uh, movie in Tron in Korean anime movies, such as, for example, Space here are Space Thun are Space Thunder Kids and Savior of the Earth, which it also has the Arcadia ship. From Leiji Matsumoto's classic Captain Harlock, and the female space pirate character Sheila in Space Thunder Kids and Savior of the Earth is a Queen of Meraldas type space pirate character, and the poster of the Korean anime Shorin Samchong Sa, the robot, has a similar face to Gundam from Mobile Suit Gundam 0079, and even the robot from the Korean anime movie. Raiders of Galaxy looks like repainted version of Mazinger from Great Mazinger, created by Go Nagai. How I appreciate the Japanese anime style in Korea and the battleship in space in the Korean anime movie Shoring Samchung Sa is the Japanese space battle space battleship. It's straight from space battleship Yamato, created by the Japanese manga artist Leiji Matsumoto. Speaking of Shoring Samchung Sa. The footage of this battleship in space explodes footage was used in cut as a cut and paste footage to create Space Thunder Kids. And the tank scene in Space Thunder Kids sounds like a motorcycle sound effects. And also Defenders of Space, the robot who basically transforms into a fire truck. It's Inferno from the Transformers G1 series. But as a Voltron style giant robot with the Phoenix, Black Phoenix logo on it. And the, the destroyed building backgrounds in Defenders of Space looks just like the 1990X post-apocalyptic 
backgrounds from the Japanese anime series Hokuto no Ken, which is translated as Fist of the North Star, and the music in Protectors of the Universe that has the reused music, which is those guitar riffs, was taken from one of the Super Sentai shows. Yep, the Super Sentai shows. And another Korean anime has live-action clips, I believe is basically Solar Adventure, and on top of that, there there is another Korean rip-off anime movie, when I was at the book sale oh, at the library six months back ago, I have bought Raiders of Galaxy. How much I paid for this? A dollar? That's right. One dollar, which is a deal. When I first got Raiders of the Galaxy, I thought it was an episode from some random anime series, but Raiders of Galaxy is not exactly some random episode, like it's from random anime series. And Raiders of the Galaxy is not exactly a Japanese anime. It is a South Korean anime movie, because it has familiar character designs from Japanese anime as well. For Defenders of Space, the Korean anime movie that predates Transformers G1 series because the Transformers G1 series has debuted on September 1984, and for Defenders of Space, it was premiered in Korea on January 29th, 1984. Because of the appearance of Inferno, didn't debut in, in the Transformers until the 1985 season, and the aliens are these blue-skinned military-type aliens, which look a lot like the Gamelons from Star Blazers. Hers, I believe. Making the first appearance of the original... And Inferno's making the first appearance of the original toy from Takara, and also anime fans will recognize elements from Mazinger Z, Patsuman, Space Battleship, Yamato, Mobile Suit, Gundam 0079, and the many works of Leiji Matsumoto. Speaking of Mobile Suit Gundam, here is another 1979 Korean anime movie. Movie. Such a... as Captain of Cosmos in 1979, on the same day as Mobile Suit Gundam 0079 series. Yep, the Gundam series. There are other Korean anime, such as Gold Star vs. Golden Bat vs. Dark Star and Run Wonder Princess anime. And because for Gold Star, Golden Bat vs. Dark Star anime, which is basically Batman with Batman out his Batman outfit with all yellow, which he has laser fingers and in the, and in the Case. Japanese studios would set keyframes in order to basically goalpost that animators there's try to hit between moving actions and these same studios would outsource the most late or intensive parts of the animation process. The in-betweens, the actual animation that is meant to get from keyframe to keyframe, and then the coloring. These outsourced jobs can go to other countries, which can go to the Philippines, Indonesia, China, or mo and as well as South Korea. And here are the manga from Korea, which it had, which I have six of them from my manga collection. I have five volumes of the Korean manga Utopia's Avenger, which it was created by Korean manhwa artist O. C. Kwon. And the Korean manhwa series, Utopia's Avenger, has lasted about, I believe, seven volumes of the entire series, Ma Korean manga series. And here is another Korean manhwa called Red Moon, which was created by Korean manhwa artist named Mina Huang, and it was also serialized in Wink. And it was lasted about 18 volumes, and... The Korean anime movie, Red Hawk, was released on 1980, in 1995, and it was released on home video by Manga Entertainment, which it was originally released in Korea in 1995, and it was brought over to America as world cinema. But when Red Hawk was first released on VHS and DVD, 
by Manga Enter Manga Video, it was dubbed in English because it has actors from other animes, such as Fist of the North Star, Ronin Kenshin, and Cowboy Bebop, and even Trigun, depending on which character voice actor, anime voice actors from which anime series that in the, what we hear in the English dub on the movie Red Hawk. Yes. This is the newest way on how I appreciate anime and manga in Korea, because now they have, but nowadays, after the 1990s, we have Japanese anime now in dubbed in Korea, and there's some anime, Japanese anime on DVD in Korea with Korean subtitles. Back then it was illegal until 1990, until the 1990s, because Nelson Shin made, cha made changes in Korea, because, you know, he was the guy who was, wor who wor was behind Transformers 1986 movie. Because now they wanted, especially South Korea has Japanese anime with, with Korean subtitles on, on any DVDs in Korea. And yep, now it's not illegal anymore because that's how I appreciate it. In other words, how I can know how I can remember the history, we can only appreciate it. So that's going to be it for my episode on anime appreciation. Thanks for watching. I hope you like. To know well, before we go, because I'm going to show you how I appreciate them, because this is my new series for YouTube called Anime Appreciation, because I haven't done a video for, for YouTube, because I know that it's four days until Halloween, but... And I know that book sales to, at the library starts at 10 a.m. in the morning, but this is my new series for YouTube. Hope subscribe for content. My anime plan link in the description. You can share this video on both your Twitter and your Facebook, and you can share this video on your Facebook with your friends on Facebook. Even if you have Facebook or Twitter, click on the notifications bar. Please subscribe to Ruroni K95 because I'm doing haven't done a video in a while. So like, subscribe, favorite, comment, read notifications, share on both Twitter and your Facebook, if you have Twitter and Facebook, click the notifications bar, read my notifications, become a subscriber to Ruroni K95, and that's it. So keep it otaku for this series, because this is Ruroni K95, I hope you like this video, hope you have a good Saturday, hope to see you soon for the next episode on anime appreciation, sayonara.